Well, good morning, our beloveds, and all that comes with it. You're probably tired. (laughs) These times are tiring. Our another is exhausted even though she is spending much of her time resting physically and occupying her mind with just mental chatter in an attempt to calm her central nervous system down, to replenish or refill her own cup because she knows that it is her responsibility and nobody else's, and speaking up, sharing her truth, being disrespected by some, being appreciated by others. And then the rest of you kind of just witness and observe without drawing a conclusion one way or the other. You're more curious about our messages than concluding their truth or lack thereof. It is the curiosity in life that connects you to the divine. It is your curiosity about the great what if that allows you to experience something outside of yourselves and it matters and why does it matter because it connects you to an energetic imprint outside of your preconceived ideas or notions when you state or say this is what it is you are creating a boundary around it defining it within your own construct instead of stating This is what it feels like, but I'm going to allow it to express itself because maybe this is not all that there is to it or within it. It is your state of curiosity that allows you to grow beyond what you believe is possible. If you think you're going to be famous in one way or another, one manner or another, You will be drawn to activities and behaviors and expression of self, most likely, that open up doors and pathways for an experience to create either that journey or something that teaches you that being famous or well-known is not actually something that you value. It is your curiosity about how do I get from point A to point Z without delineating the A, B, C, D, E, F, G story. It may not be linear. It may not be logical. And it may not even be predictable. For those of you who believe in the mystery of the unknown, leaning into the mystery of the unknown, you have seen how energy can puddle jump timeline jump. You will be on one timeline that is going to a very predictable end. And when you trust that there is something different or better out there for you, all of a sudden, just like on a train track, you are diverted from one train track to another, which leads you to a vastly different destination. And when this process is done well, You go with ease and flow. This timeline jump may be the death of a job, the death of a loved one, the death of a dream, the death of something within yourself that was the basis or foundation of your entire belief system. It may be a kundalini awakening. It matters not what it is, but when you allow us to flow through you from one point on the horizon that you foresee and predict will come about to another one, you allow us in the mystery of the unknown to pull you forward instead of you retracting or creeping back into fear. Fear is the dream killer. Curiosity allows expansion. Envision the worst nightmare that you can and feel how this feels within your body. You tighten up everywhere. It's an energetic shift as much as it is a physical shift. And now picture the greatest possible 
dream coming true. For some of you, it may be winning the lottery, though that ain't all that. It may be finding the great love of your life. It may be that your child is magically healed from a terminal illness. It matters not what it is, but when you go into the state of dreaming that something bigger and better is out there, notice how your energy body expands. It is the contrast between these two states of being that teaches you what feels good and what doesn't, what you prefer and what you don't, what you align with and what doesn't. Finding you in this journey is literally a requirement to figure out what your vibration is at different times. You are not always a loving, kind, generous human being. Sometimes you will be a raging asshole if you are either dysregulated or just tired of being treated a particular way. And it is in this contrast and accepting and acknowledging that you can be in both states that you find yourself and acknowledge that it is okay to be dysregulated sometimes. So long as you come back into a state of homeostasis, appreciate what you just went through and learn from it. If you stub your goddamn toe on the corner of an object, you will feel pain and you will react or respond out of this pain. That is human nature. Do not deny yourself the right to have emotional responses to situations where it is appropriate. And then observe when this happens, why this happens, and bring about change. Oh, when I walk around this particular object, I need to not walk so close to it because when I do, I can get hurt. Oh, when I am around this person who completely rejects and dismisses everything that I say, it just doesn't feel good, I'm going to avoid this person. When you're in an employment situation and you continue to be treated poorly by your boss, recognize that when you go for a job, if you have the luxury of this, interview your boss as much as they interview you so you can be choosy. It is a journey where you get to recognize that you have more power in the outflow of your life based on your curiosity of what could be and exploring these different points of contrast. What it feels like to be in a dream state and what it feels like to be in a fearful state and what do you prefer and why and how do you manage your expectations such that you feel content truly content with whichever state you find yourself in or that you are currently experiencing. If you say, okay, during this particular phase of my life, I am meant to experience more contrast, more pain, more difficulties, it will teach me something about myself and I have as much ability to get myself out of this as the universe does. What are my healthy options? What are my realistic options? And then explore that with curiosity and not fear. We hope that you all can really feel the vibration of the duality within this message because this is where you all find yourselves. December 21st of this year will move you into the 2024 embellished or embossed experience. Where you put your focus and attention is where you will rise up, where you will find the universe rise up to meet you. And it doesn't mean that it's always kittens and poodles. It may be difficult moments, but when you realize that these are just moments of change, moments in time that are here for you to experience with no judgment, then and only then can you experience what Buddha came to teach, and that is to dissolve in this experience of life where you simply are at peace with all that arises because it is all 
here to teach you about who you are and humanity is. We believe in blessings abound no matter where you find yourself because it is not where you find yourself, but the perception of where you find yourself that matters most. Believe in yourself, believe in your journey, and believe that retribution is not needed to be saved. It is simply an acceptance of all that is, is always as it should be. No sinful behavior, no shaming behavior, just opportunities for expansion and change that you may have missed and now you can recreate in this next version of yourself. Life is never damning you to hell for eternity. It is only damning you to hell here in this lived experience until you realize that your perception is what makes it feel like hell more than the actual lived experience. Though some of you have literally been to hell and back and we do not wish to minimize or marginalize those unique experiences. But when you get a flat tire on the highway of life, that is not going to hell. That is just a lived experience that is here to teach you obstinacy is of no use. Becoming belligerent with a tire that is flat matters not. You get your spare out, jack up the car, and replace or exchange the tires, thereby recognizing that you have more control over the outcome of the situation than you realize. Find what your opportunities are, what your choices are, and also what your preferences are, and then move in that direction course correcting as much as you can along the way to create the most optimal experience for you and not necessarily for others. When you walk away from others, it is for your optimal benefit and maybe not theirs, but maybe it will also allow them to grow in a way that they couldn't if you hadn't left them. All is well at all times. Everything is so hypervigilantly coordinated to bring about the experience that each of you requires in order to get to this thing called life. When you let go of the need to control the outcome and trust that whatever makes you feel safe within that moment is your best and most optimal choice. And then you just move on. That's it. Let go of the reins. Let go of your need to control the outcome and just be satisfied that there is something greater outside of you that is navigating the unique experiences that have been brought to your front doorstep, into your home, onto your lap. Everything is meant to teach you and you have more opportunity to control the outcome of your lives by just choosing what feels safest, best, and most healthy for you in that moment, regardless of the programming and entrainment that you received as a child. Believe not that you are helpless or a victim. You are simply blinded by the reality of what your options are because of your belief system that you are damned, eternally damned to hell if you don't believe in something outside of yourself. Believe in you and your inner guidance system and where it is flawed, do your inner work so you can fine tune and calibrate that tuning fork so that it will play the appropriate sound or vibration to guide you forward, to love, to faithfulness, to trustworthy people, to loving experiences, as well as the shit show that life sometimes brings about. And so it is. Namaste.